Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it is time for our next YouTube class. We're on YouTube number 150 and it is a loaded full of goodies for you. We have got Clean Color by Zig. We have got Gel Pins by Kaiser Craft. We have got stamps and stencils and dies from Stampendous. It is chock full of a little of crafting goodness everywhere you look on my table. I'm looking around and I think that there is something here for everyone. If you're not a stamper, that's okay. I've got something for you. If you're not a die cutter, that's okay. I've got something for you. If you're a stamper and a die cutter, that's okay. I've got something for you too. We've got winner winner chicken dinner to talk about. I've got them right here to announce and this is YouTube number 150. That is a huge milestone for us and for this YouTube I think we're going to give away some fabulous gift cards. Oh, I think we're going to do gift cards. I think we'll do three gift cards. I think we'll do one for $150 and two for 50 bucks. That's what the prizes are. <laughs> I just came up with that. <laughs> But before we get started and before I announce winner winner chicken dinner, I need to have a conversation with you and I'm not even sure I should be having this conversation with you because it's really an internal thing and a behind the scenes thing. But before I get there, I want to tell you just a super quick story and that will lead into why I am feeling that I have to make this or, or, or have this conversation with you because that's what this really is. This is a conversation between me and you. My friends out there in Cyberville watching me on your iPads or your phone or your TV, not the 72 inch TV, please. I get so worried about the wrinkles. But anyway, I embrace them. My kids gave them to me, woohoo. My kids and my, my parents, but okay. So anyway, a quick little story. When Scrapbooking Made Simple started, Obviously, we were not very, well, we're still not very big, but we were even smaller than we are now. And fixtures are expensive. When you have to go out and buy store fixtures, they can be very, very costly. So we had always been looking for store fixtures. We always were, were willing to buy used fixtures. I mean, a lot of our fixtures are used, and that's just the way it is, and I'm okay with that, and you're okay with that. But um, the way we would buy our used fixtures is that usually when a scrapbooking store that was planning on closing, when they were getting ready to close before they made the announcement, they would call me or send me an email saying, Stacy, we understand that you're looking for fixtures. Are you interested? And I would type back, well, yes, I'm so sorry to hear that you're closing, but yes, I would like your paper trays. <laughs> they had to sell them to somebody, right? So then we would drive down in my big old Suburban to whatever store that was going to be closing with my scrapbooking made simple all over three windows. And it was apparent when we would pull up to a store that scrapbooking made simple was visiting that store. Ultimately, that store would close and then you know, another store may close and would call us and we would drive down to that store with my big Suburban and scrapbooking made simple all over the three sides of it. And then that store would close. So it got to kind of be known, if you see the scrapbooking made simple car in front of a scrapbooking store or a craft store or a stamp store, chances are that store is closing. But that's not necessarily true. <laughs> <laughs> we could have just been in the neighborhood visiting, but that's kind of the the little chatter that went around for a long time. Uh-oh, you know, Scrapbooking Made Simple is the grim reaper of fixtures, because if you see her black suburban, that means that a store might be closing. So when I figured out that that's kind of what was going around, I stopped taking my suburban to those stores. And in fact, I stopped taking my to suburban to any store. That way, if we were gonna just go to visit a store, we would drive our other car so there wouldn't be any rumors. That's when I started to understand the power of, of social media and the power of uh, you know, just everything. I, I, I didn't realize, I didn't wanna cause anybody any harm. And so we stopped taking my car to stores because I didn't want to cause that store harm, even if they were closing. I didn't want to cause that store harm. So this is how I feel about what I have to talk about today. I don't want to cause harm. I don't. And we're going to be putting a product in our going, going, gone because we're not going to be carrying it anymore. I don't want it to be thought that, 
oh my gosh, Scrapbooking Made Simple is discontinuing this product, it must not be good, because that's not the case at all. It is a wonderful product. It is a good product. We encourage you to buy it and use it, and we love the product. We just had to make a decision that was based on something that was inside of me. Nobody else but inside of me. It, had, it was something that I had to wrestle with and come to terms with. So you're probably like, what the heck is she talking about? Could she just get to it? This is so hard for me. Really, it is. I've been, I've been, I've been holding off doing this until I just can't hold off anymore. Sadly, and with regret, Scrapbooking Made Simple is discontinuing chameleons from our online store and our retail store. And again, it is nothing to do with the product. The product is beautiful. It is useful. It is wonderful. We love it. What it had to do with is a marketing strategy that Chameleon had and absolutely every right to have any marketing strategy that they see fit that's going to work best for their company. Without doubt, I stand, I stand behind their decision to do what they did. I just can't move forward with them because of that decision. And as some of you know, last year they had what's called a Kickstarter program, which is a social funding page, kind of like a GoFundMe page. And the Kickstarter program allows you consumers to go and um, donate money to help them fund um, their next endeavor. Uh, a lot of people have Kickstarter pages. And again, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I applaud them for the creativity of coming up with a, a a strategy of a Kickstarter program to fund product development. Where I have a little bit of an issue and where I have been struggling is the fact that, that while that Kickstarter program was very successful for them, and I'm happy for them, um, what it did is it ultimately sold you product. So if you donated $5 to that Kickstarter program, you got in exchange for that $5 one of the brand new products that they were developing hadn't even been developed yet and if you you know spent if you donated twenty dollars you got five of those products that haven't even been hadn't even been developed yet at that time and their goal was twenty five thousand dollars to raise and they actually raised a little I think a little over a hundred thousand dollars which means that there's a hundred thousand dollars worth of chameleon product that was sold directly to you the consumer at a before even I could order it, before any retail store could order it, and at a price that we could not necessarily match. And, and again, I applaud them for what they did. It was a brilliant, brilliant marketing strategy. But where does that leave us retailers? When a manufacturer is selling $100,000 worth of product direct to you, the consumer, before we, the retailer, even have a chance to tell you about it or to offer it or to show you. And, and this is not their fault. This is me. This is solely on me. I have a moral compass that says I need to partner with companies that understand and respect and value the independent retailer because we are getting to be smaller and smaller and fewer and fewer and a hundred thousand dollars of chameleon pins out on the market before I could even order them before I could even really see them hurt me it hurt my heart did it hurt my business probably not did it hurt other businesses I don't know I, I don't really know I hope not but when it comes to partnering with companies when it comes to supporting and promoting and working with companies. I have to work with companies that see the value in scrapbooking made simple and in the little independent retailer. And again, it's not it's not a chameleon thing, it's a Stacy thing. So I didn't want you to go to the going, going, gone and think that because we're discontinuing chameleon it had anything to do with their product because it absolutely does not. Just like I don't want people to see my car in front of another scrapbooking store and think that they're going out of business and start chattering that they may be going out of business because the black suburban, the grim reaper of fixtures is visiting another store. It's that important to me that while this is my decision, it doesn't come to cause harm to Chameleon. This is, this is a moral thing that I have that I feel so strongly about. I feel, I feel that without us independent retailers out here that there's going to be, there's a hole in the market. And if a manufacturer can go direct to consumer 
before even giving us the opportunity to do something with the product, then what do you really need us for? And, um, and I think that retail, I think that the small independent retailers work so hard to gain business and to earn business and to reach those customers. So we are putting all of our Chameleon product on sale. It's in the going, going, gone. It will only be in the going, going, gone. It is at 40% off. You are welcome to it. I, I stand by the product wholeheartedly. I just can't necessarily stand by the decisions that a company made, which were in their opinion, the right decisions, and I respect them for that. So I am hoping that you don't turn me off, and I'm hoping that you don't, um, I'm just hoping that you see that it really was a difficult decision because I really wanted to support them, and I really wanted to be there for them, and I think they wanted to be there for me too, but, but this is, this is, was hard, and, um, and I wish Chameleon the very, very best. They just won some big award, and I want to congratulate them. And and I hope that um, I hope that other manufacturers don't follow the same suit <laughs> and go do a go a Kickstarter program. <laughs> I hope not, but if so, then we'll just we'll handle it on a case by case basis. And I hope that you can respect my decision just as I respect the decision of Chameleon to do what they needed to do, which is what was best for their business. I need to do what feels what sits right in my gut so with that I'm gonna move on because I have got a wonderful YouTube I hope you haven't turned me off yet and if you have well I'm so sorry but I am who I am and I got to stand by what I believe so anyway winner winner chicken dinner from last YouTube which was 149 um, what was that oh my gosh okay that was the Sizzix embossing folders <laughs> Got to get my mind back on track. Sizzix embossing folders and the dew drops and, and making those beautiful backgrounds. And it was so easy. And we used the foil hole oh, with Stacy tape. Yes, it was a lot of fun. If you are Caroline Pollard, P-O-L-L-A-R-D, or Amy, Amy Waz Waz. <laughs> okay, that made me laugh. Thanks, Amy. I needed the laugh right now. Amy Waz Waz or Caroline Pollard. P-O-L-L-A-R-D, Pollard. I hope I'm saying that right. You are our most recent winner, winner, chicken dinners. Congratulations. You are going to get a lovely selection of Sizzix product and maybe some dew drops and we'll see what else we throw in there. What do you have to do to claim your prize? It is so simple. Email us at winner, W-I-N-N-E-R at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Winner at W-I-N-N-E-R at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Give us your name, address, telephone number, and tell us your YouTube number 149 winner, winner, chicken dinner, and we will get your prizes out to you just as quickly as possible. As for YouTube number 150, that is right now, and I guess I just decided we're gonna do gift cards. We're gonna do one winner's gonna win a $150 gift card, and two winners are gonna win $50 gift cards. So what is that? That's $250, right? And then I'd say we do two winners that will win $25 gift cards because that'll just make it an even peeve in $300. Fabulous. Two will win $25 gift cards, two will win $50 gift cards, and one will win a $150 gift card. That means we will have five winners next time I see you next week. All right, I am going to get started because I've got a lot to show you. I appreciate you listening to me. I appreciate your understanding if you're still with me. <laughs> and, um, and, it just is what it is, is what it is sometimes. But we're friends now. We've been friends for a long time, so I feel I can trust you with, with my feelings. All right, down we go. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Ooh, isn't that so cute? <laughs> this is using Stampendous product. Well, Stampendous and a few others, but it's darling, isn't it? And this is using a product called Duos by Stampendous along with their new frames, their dyes the frames. I am going to start with the Duos today and I'm going to be using Kaisercraft gel pins to do it because I want you to see how easy peasy it is. And then I'm going to switch into stamping and die cutting and I'm going to use clean color. So I'm going to put this aside and you should know that I probably have at least 30 samples to show you so we're going to try and be quick about this but I want to be thorough okay I'm going to put this one aside for right now so this is the duo that we're using today I'm using the heart 
this is how it comes packaged. It's a stencil. It's a metal stencil. So you've got a, you've got a, a frame, an open metal stencil, and then you've got a detail metal stencil that goes with it. And you've got a pin that comes with it, and then they even give you paper. They give you note cards. What I want to tell you about this is that these they have six different um, six different shapes. I mean, so cute. Look at the birdie. I'm going to work with the birdie too. Everything is interchangeable between them, and I want to show you how to use them because when you see them on a shelf at your local scrapbooking store, assuming you still have a local scrapbooking store, you may look at this and go, I don't get it. Well, I want you to get it because if you like to doodle or if you like the coloring books, this is an easy way to doodle yourself and then color in. I really, I really enjoy them. Now, let's start with, I'm going to pull over, this is one of the card bases. They actually give you this in the pack. I think you get, I don't know, maybe six of them, maybe ten of them. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but they give you the card bases right there in the pack, in this pack. They also give you a pen, and I'm going to talk to you just briefly about the pen before we get started. This is a very, mm, I guess a comparable product to this pen would be a Micron pen. Now for those of you who don't know what a Micron pen is, that means that the shaft has got a metal tip on it, a nice metal tip, and there's a reason that we need to use a pen that has a metal tip. Now your duos are going to come with the pin that has a metal tip, but let's say you lose this and they're not selling these open stock yet and you need to go get yourself another pen. Run into Staples, buy yourself a Micron pin. They are not expensive and easy to find. Why do you have to use this kind of a pin? Well, like I said, we're working with metal stencils today. Metal stencils. and. If I had a basic felt pin and I put it against the metal so I could draw my stencil, eventually that metal is going to eat right into that felt and just kind of act like a little blade and start cutting into it. So you need a pen that has that metal shaft so when it's metal to metal, one, it glides nice and smooth, but two, it doesn't eat into the nib so that your nib never gets ruined. I also want to tell you that these pins, you do not have to press hard. This is a very light glide. It's not pressing so hard into that paper. Just give it a very nice light touch if you have to go around a second time. That's okay. But you don't want to press so hard that you ruin the nib, that you push the nib in and, and it kind of it kind of goes ugh. <laughs> and it, it, it kind of, it, you know, when you take a felt tip pin or something like that and you push it down and all of a sudden what made a little dot now makes this big round dot because you, you feathered it out. You want to use the pin and just give a light touch. But I don't want you to be concerned that you can't get this pin again because you absolutely can. And if you don't care about your, I mean if you've got an inexpensive other pin that you want to use knowing that eventually the metal will cut into it because that metal is, you know, it's kind of sharp, then, then go ahead and use it. But I wanted to give you a heads up on why Stampendous includes this pin with the product. It's almost like a freebie. They didn't even charge for it. They didn't charge you for the pen or the paper. Uh, the packs are $16.99, and really that's what you would have paid for the stencils anyway. They kind of included these to give you a start um, to get you going. So I have got my heart stencil here, and I am going to take a couple post-it notes just because I can. You know what? I bet I have this upside down. Oh, what do you know? I think I have it right. Wait a minute. Oh well, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm not going to sit here and <laughs> I'm not going to worry if I've got it upside down or right side up or backwards or forwards. So I'm going to take a little bit of my post-it note and I'm just going to get it down. This way my stencil doesn't move while I am drawing. And you know, post-it notes are cheap. You can certainly use washi tape without question. If you've got an old roll of washi tape that you're not using, you can use that. You can use repositionable tape. It's, it's whatever you, you know, whatever makes your heart happy. I just want it to be down so that it doesn't necessarily move. Then I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to hold my pen upright. I don't want to, I don't want it down on an angle. I want it upright, as upright as I can possibly get it. And I'm just going to follow the stencil.
pretty easy. Now most people would want to lift the stencil up. I don't. I'm going to leave it down. Gosh, and I can't tell if I did a really good job over there, so I'm just going to drop it back and go back down. Yeah, I think that looks okay. I'm going to leave my stencil exactly where it is. I'm not going to pull this piece up because I'm going to take my secondary stencil that it comes with. Remember, each set comes with a frame, and they're all different, and a decorator stencil, and they're all different. And I'm going to decide where do I want to draw my little doodads and doohickeys and all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to lay that right over the top of my first stencil. And then I'm going to post it. Just post it note right on down. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I were to lift my first stencil up, my heart stencil that's open, and then put this one down, I might accidentally draw outside the borders. Now I could have moved this anywhere I wanted. I've got it right there. But if I had wanted to, I could have moved could have moved it up here and just had a plain bottom or I could have moved it right there and had a plain top or I could have moved it I mean it's really up to you where it is you want to lay the stencil in fact I think that's what I'm gonna do maybe I'll just do a, a plain top part so I'm going to put it back down, I'm going to lay it back down and put my post-it notes back where they were just so everything kind of stays in place. Lots that can be done. It's completely creative. And because you can move the stencils around, you can create so many different looks. So I'm going to take my, my, my pen and where I see the white, I'm going to start just taking my pen and going in the stencil and tracing. That's all I'm doing. Holding my pen as upright as possible. See, here is where, here's where it's important why I left my first, my first stencil down. My first stencil is right here. But my heart, so half my heart on this one goes here, it goes off the stencil. If I had taken my bottom stencil out and I put my top stencil on, my natural tendency would have been to draw the whole heart and then it would have been outside the border. So if you leave your first stencil down, it creates that natural border for you so you don't accidentally draw outside the lines. Now, if you wanna draw outside the lines, that's perfectly fine too, but I don't. And I am just just sketching in. I'm just following the lines. I am not going to do the whole thing because I think you have the gist. Let's do a couple up here just so you see. It doesn't take long to do and then you've given yourself a whole little template to start coloring. And I like to color, so I could probably do this all day long, and I would just make pattern after pattern after pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna peel it off just so you can see what I've done. One of my posty notes. And you can see how by leaving this, I was able to go right up to the edge of my heart, but I didn't go outside the borders. If I took my first stencil off, and then I lined myself up, 
my tendency, and, and again, this could be a Stacy thing, but I would start tracing and I would have just kept tracing and I would have traced, see how that line is right there on the, I hope you guys can see that. That line is right there on the edge of the heart. I would have taken this heart and I would have just completely followed it and kept going and I would have worked outside my heart. So if you leave your first stencil down and in place, and then you take the stencil wherever you want to put it and use your post-it notes or washi tape or double-sided adhesive, whatever makes you, whatever you're going to stick it down with, your re, uh, repositionable. And then start drawing. It creates a natural barrier so that you can't accidentally go outside the lines. Okay, so I've got that much done. Now what am I going to do? Well, this is where you take whatever you have, whatever you've got, and you start coloring. You can use crayons. You can use watercolor pencils. You can use, I'm gonna use the Kaiser Craft gel pens because we have them back in stock and they're very beautiful. They flow so lovely. They were just, they're a beautiful product. So I'm really, really happy with them. And like I said, you could take your, you could take your chameleons and color with it. You could take your, your Spectrum Noirs and color with it. You could take your watercolors and color with it. It's, it's really up to you. I like the gel pens because I do like how beautifully they flow. And they are so easy peasy to use. And they travel so nice because of the carrying case. And I could just sit here and start coloring. I mean, I, I, I really, <laughs> I won't, I promise I won't. I won't make you watch me an hour color. <laughs> but the gel pens, we only carry one gel pen in our store and that would be the Kaiser Craft gel pens because they're the nicest gel pens we've ever had. And I'm so excited to have them back. It, we sold out of them so quickly but we have them, we have them back. They're just lovely. I'm not sure if they've actually landed yet, but I got the shipping confirmation that they've shipped so I can say that we've got them back. They're back online, so. And you just take and you just color. And I like how easy the gel pins are. I like that you could, if you wanted to, you could blend with a little bit of water. Let me see if I can get a little bit of a blend going here. I can take my blue on top. And maybe my, I have no idea what color this is. Put a little bit down there. Leave a little bit of a empty space. You see how I've left an empty space in the middle of my circle. I'm gonna take a little bit of water and add a little bit of water and try and blend those into each other a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, I'm not supposed to draw on that, but that's okay. A little bit of water. There we go, and blend them into each other. There we go. So it's up to you what you wanna do with them once you start going. It's really entirely up to you how you wanna use the gel pens, if you wanna use the gel pens, if you wanna use watercolor pencils, if you wanna use watercolor pens, totally up to you. However, I wanna show you how interchangeable these are. So I'm gonna set this one aside and I'm gonna grab another one of their card bases that comes with the, the sets of the duos. I'm gonna kinda push this out of my way for right now. I'm gonna bring my heart back. I'm gonna put my post-it notes back. And draw my heart again. And 
upright, as upright as possible. You are not pressing hard. Just a very light touch all the way around. Very light touch all the way around. Now I'm going to take the stencil from the birdie. Look at how cute the birdie is with that stencil. I told you the stencils will mix and match so you can line up the birdie stencil to go on top of your heart and figure out where you want it to go. You can have it. You can have it here. You can have it cover the whole thing. You can have it off to one side. Where where is it that you want your stencil to go? It's entirely up to you. And when you decide that, once you've decided where you want it to go, you're going to go ahead and tape it down. And I'm just going to do I can even rotate it. Ooh, look at that. I put it on a, on an angle. Okay, I'm going to do it rotated. And I'm going to put it back down. Just so it stays in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and anywhere I see white Anywhere I see the paper white, I'm going to start filling in and just taking my pen and just tracing my stencil. Again, my pen is pretty much vertical and I am not pressing crazy hard. Just a light touch. And again, I will not do all of this because I think you'll get the idea and I have wonderful samples for you. But I could because it's so much fun. I'll finish this flower so there's a complete flower. Doesn't take long to do. So that's where I'm at. Now I'm just going to peel off my stick my post-it notes. That's where we're at. So if I had done the whole thing, my little flowers would be everywhere. Peel off. And that's where I'm at. And then I can go in and take my beautiful gel pins. And just so you know on the gel pins for Kaiser Craft, this side is pastel colors. This side is glitter colors, glittery, shimmery happiness. So let's show you what a glitter color looks like because they really are just shimmery, beautiful happiness. <laughs> and they glide so well and they lay down so so nice. Now they don't sell them in open stock yet. I think it's going to take a little bit longer to get the pins in open stock. But we're hoping eventually Kaiser Craft has all of the colors in open stock. What I can tell you, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you, but nobody told me I couldn't tell you, right? Nobody told me that I couldn't tell you. There's more gel pins coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, wait till you see. <laughs> They're not going to be here for a few more months, but there's more coming. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I already have my order in. Yes. Okay. So I'm back to my, back to my coloring. They didn't, they didn't specifically say I couldn't say anything and I didn't tell you exactly what's coming. So Kaiser Craft, if you're watching Tolly or Brenton or anybody over there, hello, Australia. Um, I love you <laughs> and you probably should know if you don't tell me I can't I usually will any you know because I don't know that I can't okay okay can you see the shimmer oh yeah see the shimmer on there that's the glitter pins and you get what 24 pins for $19.99 and then yes they'll be on a YouTube yummy but I love how easy they are to work with I do I love how easy they are to work with and you can go back over them if you want to deepen the color just a little bit. 
and let's grab let's grab the I don't know let's see if this the yellow and then I can go in and you see that the pin does not bleed at all when you're using the gel pins that black just stays a hundred percent put I color with the yellow we are talking a lot of fun to do this and very, very, very simple. And the combinations you can make if you have, if you have two or more of the duos, the combinations that you can make are, are wonderful. I'm going to put this one aside and I want to show you some of the samples that we have because, and I'm going to show you some of the, this is the make and take that we did. So, Everybody came to the store and did this make and take, and this was with the hearts, and they colored it in with the gel pins. But what I want to show you is how different they look, depending on the color of gel pin that you use. How quick and easy to just do this as a cute five card little set for somebody, bundle it up and give it to them so they can send it to their friends. All done with the same heart. It's my dotty paper down there and some ribbon and poof, you're done. Easy. But I want to also show you some of the more advanced, more fully colored. Oh my goodness, these are gorgeous. So I showed you the first one. And as you can see, that one was done with the butterfly duo, which I'll show you. Really pretty. And then I'm just going to grab them all. And then we have the flower and we have look at this one the balloon look at that is that amazing that's done with the balloon stencil and then the pattern that goes with it and then I feel it sticking on something oh yeah look at that butterfly is that gorgeous And then we have the gift. And here, very little of it was actually colored. It was stenciled and almost entangled in a way, but only a little bit of it was colored. You don't have to color in everything, sometimes leaving the negative space. So here's the two. These two are exactly the same. Sometimes leaving the negative space, it, it, it makes a difference. It changes the look. These are the exact same stencil. Totally different looks though. Here we have the heart. And again, this heart was the exact same as this one, but completely different looks, but using the exact same stencil. So pretty. And then we use just the background up, oh, just the background. So we took this piece here and put it right onto paper and didn't use the open heart at all. Just transferred that onto paper, colored it in, cropped it out, matted it, and it was done. That's using just the decorator stencil. Oh, here's another one using just the decorator stencil. Oh, and another one. <laughs> another one using just the decorator stencil where the outline stencil wasn't used at all, but you can kind of get an idea of what that would look like if you had used the outline stencil. <laughs> they're fun. They're easy. They travel easy. It doesn't take any expertise to do this, everybody can be successful at this because you are just tracing and then coloring. And quite often, I don't even think about the colors I'm grabbing, I just start to go and it comes out to what it comes out. Look at the butterflies are triple color. So cute. So if you are just starting to craft and you wanna make some very simple cards, but you want them to be handmade and you wanna have, you wanna do something to them, you just don't wanna slap down a piece of paper, this is a very good way for you to start. And if you are an experienced crafter, well, let's be clear. These are metal stencils. You can get out your paints, you can get out your gelatos, you can get out your um, 
mixed media product and you can use it with, with texture pastes and a whole bunch of goodness. I have got a few here that have been really done up. How happy is that? Look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. You've, it's been done with texture pastes, it's been colored, it's got a gloss finish to it. Beautiful, isn't it? Here, the birdie. Look at that. Again, texture pastes. Colored first onto the black, texture paste. Probably with gelatos would be my guess. Beautiful, isn't it? That's not using the pen at all. <laughs> and then here we have another one with a bird. Where just the bird was just the bird was um, traced onto pattern paper and then just slightly shaded in, using probably a little bit of chalk or a watercolor pencil and then colored. And then look at the background. That background is one of the stencils, just randomly all over white paper and it makes the background. These are duos by Stampendous and they are a world of fun and very, very, very easy. So I wanna show you, I wanna show you the sets. So there's the birdie set that comes with like the sunflowers. There's the package that comes with the more geometrical. There's the flower that comes with the, that has the butterflies in it. And then the butterfly, <laughs> the butterfly set comes with a beautiful, beautiful stencil. And the nice thing is with Stampendous, they give you kind of a sample of what you can do. And if you turn it over, they give you more samples to give you an idea of what can be done with it. And like I said, they're giving you the pen and the paper for free. So, and the, stem, uh, the stencils don't go bad. And then if you know my YouTubes, you know you can use a, bra uh, a stencil in your Big Shot machine, but that's another YouTube. But yes, you can to get that impression. The balloon and the heart. So this is all of them. They are on a YouTube Yummy. They're very simple to use. I absolutely would recommend that you have post-it notes or repositionable tape or some old washi tape that you have just to put everything down. And again, you want to remember to lay your first stencil down, do your tracing, don't pick that stencil back up, leave it where it is, take your decorator stencil from whatever set you want to use and figure out where it is you want it to look and then tape that down or post it note that down and then start because that's going to make an automatic barrier because I can't go I can't draw outside of the lines because my line is still there because my stencil is still there and that will make it very easy for you you just lay them right down so if you've got kids this is great for kids you could even go in and trace it for them and then let them color. It's, it's coloring books a la carte. <laughs> because you can mix and match and do whatever you want to do. Um, it's up to you. It's not predetermined. It's not a page that's already there ready for you to color. You can get a little bit more creative with this. And then, yes, use them in your cards. Use them in your scrapbooks. Use them in your layouts. Absolutely. Okay. That is Duos by Stampendous. We have a few hundred sets of the gel pins left. If you did not get them last time, I would absolutely say get them this time. You are not going to want to miss them. I'm going to push this, uh, put that down, and then I think I am going to move on to the stamps. Put my gel pins away because I'm the worst at putting stuff away. Sorry, guys, but if I don't put them away... Poor Elena has to come up here and she helps clean up after me. Well, we both clean up once the YouTube's done, but stuff is everywhere. Okay, now I have got a stamp from Stampendous and this is one of their cling rubber stamps. So this will cling right onto a block. This now, how do I say this? They have made dies. 
they have made two sets of dies. They're calling them their Franz, I think Franz fitted frames. I'm gonna go with that. And there's two different sets. This is set A and then there's a set B. What's nice about their frames? And yes, I know a lot of people have frame dies. They did this with a very specific purpose. And the purpose was to come out with frames. I keep seeing that that's glaring. To come out with frames that will fit around any of their stamps. That's what, except for the jumbos. I, they won't go for the jumbos, I don't think. And if they do, I'm so sorry. I, I, I just, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think they work with the jumbos. This will go if you have the fitted frames A or the fitted frames B and you have stamps, specifically Stampenda stamps, but there's so many different sizes that they're going to work with lots of different stamps, lots of different companies, and then you don't even have to use them with your stamps. You can just use them as frames. But I kind of want to explain to you how they work. Now, the beauty of having both sets is that no matter what Stampendous stamp you have, doesn't matter what Stampendous cling stamp you have, one of these frames is going to work with your stamp without question if you have both sets. We're going to be sending this little cheat sheet with everyone who purchases the frames. And there's a reason. Some of you keep your stamps in their original packaging, which has their little SKU number. Do you see that number right there? This one says CRP. The first three letters are CRP. Now the C and the R stand for cling rubber, and you just disregard there. It's the P I want you to pay attention to. Because if you come back to your cheat sheet, it's gonna tell you exactly what frames will work with this stamp. So all of the frames have been lettered with the numbers that work, or the lettered with the, have been labeled with the letters, there we go. Labeled with the letters that they correspond to in stamps. Let me look at, is this also? Let's see if I can find one that's not a P. Oh, I grabbed all P's. Okay, so here we have another one. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at the back. The C and the R, the first two, are always cling rubber, so you disregard those. You're going to look at the third letter, and that is a P. So you would come over here, and you would know that P is in fitted frame A, and it's the second one down, because it says fitted frame A, and it's the second one down. If you had one that ended in, that had a K, there's your K. If you had A, there's your A down there. So they've come up with a system that allows you to have frames that work with all of their uh, all of their cling stamps with the exception of the jumbos and I'm not hundred percent positive on the jumbos or not So I don't want to say yes on the jumbos because I'm not hundred percent positive But then you also just have dies you can just make beautiful frames without having to use the stamps at all So I've pulled this out And fitted frames a it's P it's number two What I want to tell you about the frames is the dies are a little thin so, and because it's an open die, I don't want you to bend them. So when you are peeling them off, you have a couple options. The way we've been doing it is to grab at the point. Oh, I need number two, right? So I'm gonna grab at the point and I'm just gonna pop it up. So I grabbed at the point, put my finger under there, grab at the point and just pop it up. That's how we're pulling them off. Other people lay them flat backwards and peel, hold them down here and peel the tape off this way. It's really up to you. But what I don't want you to do is to just grab them and start bending and pulling. I really want you to just take your finger, run it to the little point and pop it right up. Or I want you to flip it upside down and I want you to pull from the back that way the frames the dies stay completely flat and just pull it straight down. Now once you put them on your, if you, if you store them on here, 
then then I want you to do that repeatedly. Once you put them on your magnetic platform, let's say, or not your magnetic, your magnetic sheets, let's say you're storing all of your dies on your magnetic sheets, then once you've got them off here, you don't have to worry about that again. This is just because of the sticky tape that's holding them in place, and I don't want you to bend them. Once they're on a magnetic sheet, you are good to go. So, and you might even want to take this, because we're going to send it to you, and cut this out and put this on the back side of the magnetic sheet and put the dies on the front side of the magnetic sheet so you have a quick reference. So I've got my frames here and I'm going to be using them with my Stampendous stamps. Now I'm going to pull this one out. Oh, did I open up B? No. Did I open up B? Oh, I needed to open up. No, I'm good. I think I'm good. I hope I'm good. All right, we're going to go anyway. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I'll fix it. I'm going to pull out my stamp. And the reason why I'm pulling out my stamp in front of you as opposed to having it all ready is there's another something I just want to show you. Stampendous stamps have a very unique feature. You see that it's on the plastic, but there's another piece of plastic here. And I don't know if I can get a view of that. There's a separate piece of plastic right here, and you can feel it. Once you get it home, you'll be able to see it. I'm trying to get a view on it and see if I can get it angled. So when you're peeling off the plastic, the first piece peels off beautifully. That's the carrier. It's the second piece that I don't want you to peel off. That's what makes it cling to the block. That is how Stampendous adds the cling to the block so it stays, is the second piece of plastic. I don't want you to pull this off. You should take the first piece off, and that comes off really nice. It's the second piece. If you're having to tug, then you're trying to pull something off that shouldn't come off. Stampendous is the only company that does it this way, and they do it this way to give you a little bit of extra cling where maybe their stamp isn't. So you've got extra cling over here and extra cling over here. And I'm just going to put it right down onto my block and it's going to stay. Now if for some reason it didn't stay, then you're just going to take your stamp and you're going to wash your block in palm olive and you're going to wash your stamp in palm olive or dawn or whatever you've got, something light and, and um, not so abrasive. And that will take all your oils from your fingers off. It'll take all the embossing powder you may have or glitter you may have that's stuck on here that's causing it not to stick. But once it's good, it's good. And you can use it again and again and again and again and again. So for those of you who have never seen stamps, that's what it does. I'm going to grab just one of their card bases because that's what I've got right here. And I'm going to grab my Memento ink. And I'm going to use Memento ink because one, it's the best all-purpose ink out on the market. Two, I'm going to be using clear colors, clean colors, clean colors. I always want to say clear. Clean Colors by Kurataki, which is a Zig product. And the Memento does not react with water. So a Tim Holtz ink would not be good because Tim Holtz ink is meant to react with water and I don't want that inked image to smear all over the place. I've got my stamp, my little gush pad, which actually comes in a huge size. This is a gush pad. It is a stamp mat. And it's huge, really. It's so big that when we ship it to you, we have to cut it in half. This is like 1 16th of it, literally 1 16th of it. So you can cut it in half and share it with a friend. But what it does is it gives you a little bit of gush so that when you're stamping, the stamp can kind of sink into the paper and give you a nice, good, all over impression. Now, I'm not doing chest compressions. This is not what I'm doing. That's not gonna help you. I'm trying to give nice, good, all over pressure. Now, this is a brand new stamp. It hasn't ever been used. So it may take one or two, well, probably three or four stampings before any um, residue comes off of it and gives me a really crisp image. But we're gonna be just fine. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that came out lovely. <laughs> But really, when a stamp is brand new, either wash it with, um, you know, take a baby wipe and really scrub it down good, or ink it up and stamp, and then ink it up and stamp, and ink it up and stamp, and you will see the more you do that, the better the impression is. But because I used a stamp mat and I didn't go into hard surface, 
that stamp was able to um, sink into that paper and get a really good contact, which gave me a really good, <laughs> a really good impression. All right, this is where the clean colors come in. And when we decided that we were gonna um, say goodbye to Chameleon, I really wanted to find something that would give you a very similar look that was an easy product to use. And this, this truly is where the where the, the clean colors came in. I needed to find something that would give you that ombre effect like a chameleon or a Copic marker, but was simple without having to be an alcohol-based marker. Clean colors are absolutely, um, they're water-based. There's lots of YouTubes on them. In fact, I think I'm gonna just pull this one over here really quick. They, um, they, color beautifully and what you need to know about clean color if you've never seen them before is the nib what makes them so unique is that nib and you would think that that's just a solid nib but it's not clean color actually I don't know if you can see that actually is a brush nib where it has little little see that it actually becomes a a beautiful beautiful brush it's got bristles to it Whereas most, when they're this shape, it's just that shape and it doesn't open up like that. So it gives you lots to do. Look at how juicy they are. But if you want to add water to them, you can. So a little bit of water. And ultimately, you're making a watercolor paint out of them. And the more water you add, the more the color is diluted and eventually will blend. So these are absolutely blendable pens without question. I mean, you can do everything from, um, from just coloring with them like we were. You can take them and watercolor with them and add your water and kind of move that water around and have that beautiful watercolor look. You can put them onto your palette and or a piece of, uh, plastic or whatever you've got and add water to it and palette paint with them if you want to do that. There's really not much you can't do with them. Um, you can also do a tip to tip blending. So I've got my yellow, I've got my pink. I'm going to add a little pink to my yellow and then I'm going to, it blends right on the tip. And no, it doesn't harm the pen, absolutely. But like I said, I had wanted to do something that had kind of that chameleon feel to it where you get that beautiful gradation of color. And there's many ways to do it with this pin. You can do it by palette painting, you can do it by drawing on it and then using water to blend out the color. But I wanted something that was quick and simple and easy and that I thought all of you would be able to do effectively and be happy with the results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pin Make sure I don't have any other color. I know I had a little yellow in it. Take my pen and I'm going to put it directly into my water. I'm going to take that nib and I'm going to hold that nib directly into my water. It's almost like a chameleon pen where you're infusing it with the blender solution, but because this is water based, there's no alcohol needed. Now, what's going to happen is as that water slowly, um, slowly dissipates out, as, as more ink comes into the nib, my color is going to get darker and darker and darker. So I'm going to start at the top of wherever I'm going and I'm just going to go back and forth until that color slowly starts to draw out. So I was able to achieve from light to dark using a water-based marker. Really pretty, isn't it? I wanted to give you an option. So those of you who are worried about an alcohol marker or want that look of an alcohol marker, but don't necessarily want to invest in an alcohol marker or are concerned about how difficult it can be to use them, this is just a water-based water pen. And because of the way it's manufactured, and because of that beautiful nib, that brush nib that holds the water, 
I can just go back and forth and back and forth and lay down my color. And if I really want to, and I want to pick some of that color back up, I can go back in with water and I can lighten my color because this is a water-based marker. So you're not dealing with an alcohol. And I can go in and put water over the top and start pulling up that color if I want to pull that color up a little bit. You have lots and lots of options. They're beautiful and they come in 80 colors and you can buy them open stock. You can, I will tell you, it, there's the, there's like a six pack or an eight pack, a 12 pack, a 24 pack, a 36 pack, a 60 pack, but there are 20 colors that are not sold in any of the packs, not in any of the packs. Let's do, let's do a different color. So I've got my color here. I'm just going to put it there so you can see what we're looking at. Look at how fabulously juicy that is. How crazy that color is. And if I wanted to watercolor with it, I could take my pencil or my paintbrush and I could then start moving it and doing whatever it is I want to do with it. And that color will dissolve into what looks like watercolor. Or, like I said, I could put it right down on my palette here. This is my craft sheet. I could add water directly to that and come in and paint with it. And the more water you use, the lighter your color is going to be. And you can just move it with water. Or I can come in and put it directly into my water. Let it sit there for a, a few, not, not a few minutes, not, not, but give it a second or two. When you lift it up, you can see that the nib has changed. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to go back and forth and slowly but surely the darker color will start to prevail and come out. Did I go all the way? So this is just another option to get you that, that lawn fawn look, that Copic look, where everything has a top to a bottom shade, a, a, a highlight, a medium, and then a dark tone. And you can go back in. You can play. If you wanted to add a little bit of yellow to the pink, you can put your yellow right down on your mat. Pick it up with some water. Go in and add a little bit to your pink. Sure you can. Because it's water-based, you can do just about anything you want. You really have lots and lots of options because a little bit of water goes a really long way. And that nib that it comes with, that brush nib that's an actual bristle brush, and that yellow is just going to blend right into that pink. I'm going to make it blend right into that pink. And I've changed my whole color. Add a little bit of water. And I can pull some of that color up and out. And you can see how the memento is not smearing. That's really important. They're beautiful. They're lovely markers. They're, they have a, a very um, useful purpose and that's important to me that they have a useful purpose you're getting several things all in one and again the key look it's you can you can paint with these you can make the most beautiful watercolor paints oh my gosh <laughs> I had so much fun with these but I didn't want to um, I, I I I didn't want to overwhelm you with these and chameleons and and Copics and everything else but I think now is a good time to now is a good time to bring them out because it does give you that fabulous option. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put that one back in. I want to show you. Um, let's see. Here's this one. So there's the nib. There's the nib before water on it, 
and then I'm going to put it in the water and that nib is going to lighten up. I'm just going to let it sit there, not for too long. And now you can see the nib has changed colors, it's lightened up. That's because that water has infused. And I now can just take it and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until the darker color starts to prevail and blend out towards the bottom. What do you think? I can tell you the girls are having a great time with them. Um, Doris, SMS girl Doris, actually made, you might have seen these samples before because this is um, this is my product, this is with my dies and stamps. Probably should wipe that up. Doris did this one with her, um, her clean colors. And she did this one. This one's from Be Inspired, which is completely sold out. And this one was from Serenity. But all of the inking, all of that, was done with her clean colors. All of the, all of this was done with clean colors. Beautiful, aren't they? But we're not done yet because now we have the option of die cutting. Oh, I, you know what? I think I'm going to take these. The girls stamp these downstairs because they're working on the make and take right now. I think I'm going to take these and I'm going to die cut because we can. We've got the frames that go and work perfectly with your Stampendous stamps, but you can use them all on their own without any question. So I'm going to take the smaller frame and you're going to see that it will line up. And it will cut that perfectly. It's meant to fit. They made it to fit. This is the pea size frame and it goes with the pea sized stamps. It was made to fit. I'm going to bring over my Big Shot machine and I'm going to tell you, do not use your precision base plate. This is a frame die. If you use your precision base plate, that it's going to curly up like a curly cue. I have got my my cut plate down. I have got my stamped image and I would have already colored it because then you can color outside the lines and you don't have to worry about it. I have got my my die down and since I'm on a magnetic platform nothing moves. I have got my do not cut plate on top and I'm going to send it on through. And it's going to hit a perfect perfect cut. Little creaks and cracks are okay. Don't worry. It will be fine. Perfectly cut. Think of all the stamps you have. These frames are going to do wonders for you, especially if you have both sets. Now, if you have to buy them one set at a time, absolutely. You know what? I'm just going to grab a piece of my Bedazzled. There's my Bedazzled Shimmer cardstock, and I am going to take the larger of the two frames because that is how they come when you see them together like that on the sheet, that means one of them, the inside one cuts around the stamp, the outside one gives you a perfect mat for the stamp. So I've got my magnetic platform. I absolutely could use my multi-purpose platform, whether it be long or small. Just keep your tabs completely closed. Do the same sandwich, but keep your tabs completely closed. So it would be We'll just go ahead and do it. It would be your multi-purpose platform, long or small, your cut plate, your die, or your paper, your die, and then your do not cut plate. Just remember to keep that platform completely closed because you are cutting a wafer die. Bring over my Big Shot machine, and this sandwich is true whether you have a Big Shot machine, a Big Kick machine, a Vagabond machine, um, a plus machine, it's still the same sandwich. They're all Sizzix machines. Pop that bad boy right on out. Got my little magnetic so I don't lose it. Yay. 
And now I've got the perfect map ready to go. And if I had wanted to, I could have been coloring it. And I'm just putting my nib right into my water and start at the top, whatever part I'm going to start with, and just back and forth and back and forth and cover that whole area. And you'll see that the ink will get darker and darker and darker as that water dissipates on out. Can you see how beautiful that could be? Now my nib is back to just being orange, just being orange. But when I put it in my water, let it sit there for a second or two. You don't really even have to count. Now it's white. Start at the top and just back and forth and back and forth until you see that darker orange will slowly start to come out. Talk about easy peasy coloring. So I've got my perfectly done mat with my Stampendous framed eyes. I've got my beautiful ombre effect, alcohol ink looked effect coloring on my Stampendous stamp. Love my shimmer paper. <laughs> and it was just very simple to do. That's what clean color can do. And then of course, if I don't necessarily want to use the frames with, I, I could take anybody's stamps and stamp in there. If the stamp fits, I don't want to say OJ. We're not going to talk about OJ. If the, if the stamp, I can't come up with anything clever. So, um, <laughs> but I think you're really going to be happy with the effect. And Stampendous has been around for so long and so many of you have such a wonderful collection of their product. Isn't this a great way to, to be able to die cut it out and have it fit your cards and your scrapbooks and your layouts and your mixed media and your altered art perfectly every time. And it's all about... So even if you don't know what the letter is on the back of your stamp, you threw the packaging away, you know if you have both sets, you're going to find one of them that works because they made sure of it. They made sure of it. And like I said, we're going to send this along with every single order so you have it. Because sadly, it is not on the packaging. So we've got frame set A and frame set B. It's not on the packaging. I wish it were, but it's not. But I understand there, you know, the feeling is, well, if you have both of them, then you don't have to worry about it. And just think of all the different things you could do. So you see there's the two of them together. That means the outside one is your mat and the inside one cuts the where, around the stamp. The outside one's your mat, the inside one cuts around the stamp. Or cuts around whatever you want it to cut around. Look at how many options you have. So I'm going to show you some samples because I have got beautiful, beautiful samples. And I showed you the samples that Doris did. I have a lot of samples. <laughs> so downstairs right now, everybody's doing this make and take. They're watercoloring with the clean colors. They're die cutting with the stamp or with the dies. Ooh, with the dies from Stampendous. And everybody right now is playing with the colors that they like best. We've got all the clean color pins downstairs and they're just having themselves a heyday. But these are some of the samples that the girls did. And you can see how having one dye but in multiple colors can change. You can go from very, very bold and very, very bright to very, very soft and very, very pastel-y, all with a change of, of ink and paper. That simple. Then we have some more beautiful things where we've used the, the dies to cut around. Absolutely gorgeous. You've got the dies that have cut all the way around. And look at how stinking cute is this. The little mushrooms. Cut all the way around. Cute card, isn't it? Stampendous did this one. They did a great job. 
Here, what you think it is, it isn't. Here, it's an actual window. Because yes, if you want to create a window, you just take and die cut the hole out on your, you've got your scored card, cut the hole out and you have now created a window. And because you get both pieces, you get the big and the small, look at that, you've got your matting right there. The frame right outside. Cute, huh? And that's a window. The girls also did this by putting the two pieces together. You can also create just a frame. Just a frame. Here we show two different sizes. So here you've got a large house mouse stamp, and here you've got a small little sentiment, but both of them have the dies to coordinate so that you can cut them out just so. And I love this one again. Stampendous did this one, and it's absolutely beautiful. And you can see the size of the stamps that you can use. That lovely, love that one. I love this one too. That one's just happy, isn't it? It's just happy. And you've got the two dies, the one that cut around the stamp and the one that made the mat to go with. Perfect every time. I think, well, yeah, we did this one. And we used the ombre effect to do the, the balloons. So we dipped our clean color right into water to do the balloons. Then we put our frame. We did this one also. I don't know how you pick which one you like the best. I'm having a hard time. Oh, I'm almost done with samples. Yeah, there's a lot. But I wanted to show you everything. Look at how big this stamp is. Look at the size of that stamp. And yet the frame, they still have a frame that fits around it perfectly. And here's using three different sizes. Look at that. This one I think they stenciled. I think they used a Dreamweaver stencil. So you've got one set of frames here, one set of frames there, and one set of frames there to make up that. And that's so cute. And here, it's right off the side. It's not even, we didn't, they didn't even use it to, to stamp on, to frame the stamp. It's used as an embellishment to the card. And then Yvette did this one. Well, she did a lot of these. <laughs> But how pretty is that? All right. So what did we go over today? We talked about clean color. And yes, they will all be on a YouTube Yummy without question. We talked about the frames. And yes, they'll be on a YouTube Yummy without question. Um, there'll be three of the stamps that we're using in the make and take. They'll be on a YouTube Yummy. Um, the Kaiser Craft will be on a YouTube Yummy. And the duos will be on a YouTube Yummy. So you've got a lot to choose from this time. Holy smokes, artichokes. I think that it was a great technique. I think that the colors are beautiful. I think the concept that you can have the frames that fit your stamps is brilliant. I'm just, I'm really happy with all of it. And, I, and they all work lovely together. And if you don't have the clean colors and you have chameleons, use them. And if you don't have the chameleons, but you have watercolor pencils, use them. And if you don't have watercolor pencils, but you have Tim Holtz distress markers, use them. But if you have to have the clean colors, we get it. They're beautiful. You'll love them. All right. So, oh, I forgot to show one other one that Yvette did. I don't want to not show one that Yvette did. Look at that. Is that gorgeous? <laughs> Look at it. Is that fab? All right, so I'm gonna tilt on up, and I'm gonna say, it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple. I know it's been a long YouTube. I hope you liked everything that we showed today. I hope you learned some things that are new to you or products that are new to you. Shop mom and pop. <laughs> if you don't have a local store, we understand. Shop online, but if you do have a local mom and pop, go visit them and say hello. And, and I'm sure that they would love to be able to show you new products and teach you new things. That's what we mom and pops do. We know your name and, and we appreciate it when you stop by. So, um, but many of you sadly have lost your, your independent retailers. So where would you get all of this if that's the case? ScrapbookingMadeSimple.com and it will all be on sale for you. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, ScrapbookingMadeSimple.com. Did I say that? And don't forget, we're going to do a $150 gift card 
two $50 gift cards and two $25 gift cards for our 150th YouTube. Woo! Bye, everybody.